again, my name is Adam Balczak, it's some of you just uh, arrived. I talked late, uh, earlier about my book, about business and organizational aspects of open source. And now I would like to present to you an uh, open source startup uh, project in Poland. It's named Kukadu and uh, this is a system with, in which we want to uh, popularize an open source manufacturing management system and while doing while doing it, we're also creating a framework for business applications and we're creating a fast hosting for models to enhance <coughs> the manufacturing production. Uh, oops. Uh, generally, what does a manufacturing management system do? This is uh, really quite simple. Uh, First of all, we manage uh, basic data like products, machines, people, uh, processes, and so on. Uh, when we have the basic data inserted into our system, then we manage technologies. Uh, a technology is just a chain of operations that define how we produce some things. Uh, like, for example, if we produce uh, TV sets, then first we have to uh, assemble some parts, then we have to insert the screen and let's say package it. So this is how we define a technology. We have three operations. Every operation has inputs and outputs. Uh, when we have uh, technologies defined, we can uh, create production orders. A production orders is just, let's say we want to produce uh, 20 TV sets uh, for before Friday. And this is a production order. Once our production order is uh, entered, we can generate uh, a bill of required mater materials. So we can simply say, to build 20 TV sets, you will need 20 screens, uh, 70 power chargers, and so on. Uh, we also, uh, when you have this bill of materials, we can check how much of these materials you have in the stock and how much you have to order. And then you can do many other operations uh, related to our technological process. Uh, you can do quality control, uh, you can check genealogy, so you can know if you have produced a TV set, uh, let's say batch number 55, then you know from which screens and which electronic components that you build it. And also many other aspects like cost calculation, uh, production, reporting, so you can know exactly how long did it take you to produce TV sets, uh, uh, how much did you use the components actually, so maybe some screens were uh, invalid and you had to throw them away. And after this we can do something that is called uh, production recounting. Uh, this is a process in which you check what were the estimates, how much will the production of the cost, how long will you take, with the actual data you could collect it from the production line. Uh, the thing I was talking about, we also support scheduling, so you can uh, see uh, how much uh, your resources on the production line are being uh, taken to the production process. And using this data, you can schedule that we'll build uh, in the first week TV sets, then we'll build the radio sets, and we'll still have some capacity to add some more orders that come along from our clients. And we also have a wide range of reports that help you manage the production <coughs> process and keep everything in line. Uh, but besides doing Kukadu Mess, which is this uh, manufacturing management system, we also created uh, the Kukadu framework. Uh, this is a set of uh, well-established Java technologies with uh, many of our add-ons which are integrated into one framework. Uh, why would, did we even want to do this? Why, didn't, uh, why weren't the frameworks available in the Java world enough to accomplish this, uh, this system? Well, we had a couple of uh, requirements that we couldn't have achieved without uh, making our own framework. First of all, we wanted everything to be a model. The system has to be customizable and you have to, even the smallest functionality should be separated into one model. This is because if you create uh, uh, CRM software or ERP software, it's usually uh, quite the same. Uh, the basics are <coughs> the same in every company. You, you always account uh, financial ins information in the same way in, in a certain country. Uh, you always serve customers in a pattern of leads, opportunities, and so on. But in production, uh, it's a very varying process. There are many ways to organize production. You have batch production, you have flow processing. 
there are so, so many ways people organize their production lines that you just can't have one monolithic system that you will think that you can implement in many companies. You have to be have a system that is like assembled like from Lego blocks. You just have to choose the components you really want and choose the ones that do something differently to make this ideal system for your company. Uh, secondly, we wanted to make it easy for the first first to work, work with. This is because we want to create a large partner network and community around the fra framework and system by itself. And to do that, we designed custom XML languages to define the data model and the GUI. They're really quite simple and powerful. In just a few line of, uh, lines of codes, we can implement a new entity, like let's say a transport in a warehouse. Uh, we can add a table to it, which already has filters, pagining, uh, navigation, and printed reports. And we can have, by standard custom cr uh, standard crude operations, like create, remove, update, and delete. And all of this we can do with just line of, one of with a couple lines of, of code. We have all the foundation to let's say add transport to a warehousing model and implement more complex uh, business logic in Java. This is actually the preferred way we do things. We uh, designed the GUI in XML, we designed yeah. the data model in XML, and then when we have more complex business logic, we use Java to define it. And we also use some well-established patterns like inversion of control from Spring and aspect-oriented pro uh, programming to customize the business, lo business logic and flow. Uh, so after saying all that, what makes us different? We, there are already a couple of well-established uh, manufacturing <coughs> management system on the market, uh, but we wanted to do some things differently. First of all, as I already stated, we are extremely modular, and we didn't find any system which was as close to as close customizable as ours. Uh, and by extensibility, we mean we can extend everything. Let's say we have a basic situation where we, we have some module A. This module A has a position in the menu, uh, some custom filter, some table grid on it, and some functionality. And let's say we want to install uh, another module, which has another grid, some kind of uh, date, uh, uh, dates to manipulate and radio boxes. But what is specific, what is great about the system is that other models can extend previously installed models and bu uh, and build around them new uh, blocks of business logic, add GUI components, database model elements, and uh, business flow. And <coughs> Everything is customizable. Mm -hmm. If you have a model that does 80% of what you what you really want, but 20% is not actually what you really do in your company, you can write another model that simply just overrides the business logic, the GUI, and customizes it perfectly to your company. Another thing that we wanted uh, uh, to achieve, which differentiates us, is that we wanted to work in the cloud. We don't want our customers to have to install the software or pay uh, to upgrade it constantly, uh, keep it intact, make it work efficiently. We just want uh, the customer to pay a subscri subscription and we'll give them this application in the browser with no, absolutely no effort. Of course, there's still room for training, uh, for deployment of some parts that have to run, run on the production line. But the system itself is maintain, maintained mainly up on our servers. But of course, if someone wants to, we can also do a installation uh, in his uh, local uh, network, or he can take the open source version and install him by, it by himself or host it on a uh, KPS hosting or some other kind. Uh, so if we're speaking about the cloud, uh, it's not really a great technical term. Uh, and we often ask ourselves, what the fuck is it? Is it a technical term or just a marketing slogan used to wash our heads a little? Uh, well, there are separate opinions about the topic. For example, Richard Starman says that this is stupidity, or it's even worse than stupidity, it's a marketing hype. And on the other side of the barricade, we have Eddie Allison from the Oracle Corporation would just say that it says that it's nonsense and water vapor. But when you ask them uh, more deeply what do they have in mind when they say the, these things, 
uh, they actually go to quite strict uh, business and technical terms. For example, Richard Starman's answer is that by buying software as a service, which is an essential component of the cloud, we lose completely control over it. Uh, it runs on someone else's server, someone else uh, watches it over for you. But is this wrong? Do we really want to administrate our software and uh, back it up and optimize the database? Most people just want to use it, and for them, this should be as a service. On the other hand, uh, Ellison says that uh, this is nothing new, that this is something we've been doing since the 90s, and this isn't uh, very innovative at all, but this is true. And if you see the portfolios of big companies like IBM and Oracle, they could always create virtual, uh, virtualized data centers and give you a private cloud in which you can run multiple applications and scale, the, scale them throughout the data center. But uh, until now, this wasn't common. Uh, not every project uh, had the cash to create such a large data center to auto-scale the applications. With the emergence of, for example, Amazon Elastic Cloud, we can, almost everyone can have an elastic and scalable solution for himself. So, uh, if you want to forge the cloud term to more technical terms, uh, we can see the we can build building blocks of the cloud, and one of the most prominent ones and uh, recognized is SaaS, so software as a service. And in fact, every one of us uses is, uses this every way. We use Gmail, we use Google Documents, we use many applications that just run online and. A couple of years, years ago, they were only on the desktop. Now we can collaborate on the net, uh, write documents, and create presentations, and so on. So this is the essential block for the customer and user. Another interesting thing that emerged a couple of years ago was EAS, so infrastructure as a service. And for, this is, for example, Elastic Cloud and many other uh, uh, cloud hostings that give you virtual servers that are automati automatically scalable, so you can have in one click, 100 instances of a server. A new thing that is built on top of uh, EAS is PaaS, platform as a service. So let's say, okay, we like the elasticity, we like that we can have 100 <coughs> instances of a server in one second, but how about if I don't want to take care of my operating system and configure my middleware, I just want to deploy my application and say that someone configures it for me. And there are servers built on top of that idea that you can just create a PHP, Python, or Java application, deploy it to the cloud, and the service provider will take care of everything for you. Of course, for some cash, additional for uh, Another interesting thing that is emergent on the web are web APIs. As you can see, almost uh, every portal, every web application nowadays has some kind of API in which you can integrate it. You don't have to buy documentation for it or negotiate some terms. You just can use it, start sending uh, HTTP requests to it and integrate your own application with it. Another phenomenon are micro -billings. So we don't want to pay a monthly subs subscription or a uh, heads up $100,000 for, let's say, a license for three years. We want to pay just for what we use. If we have three, three users, we want to pay for three users. If we want to just want two models of the system and not the whole system, we want to pay for the two models and don't have to be forced to buy a package for more users or a bigger uh, model set than we really want to. And the last building block that we see are mar market application marketplaces. This is like you see in your iPhone, the App Store, you can by one click just install a new application to your phone and you can see also many other examples where more specialized uh, marketplaces are coming for, for big systems. And this really seems to look like a quite nice system architecture. This is actually a quite nice way to organize your software and build, build your future web applications. But could this get uh, any better? Well, we think it could. What about if we specialize some components in this diagram to a certain business model or a usage domain? And we think that two components uh, would be easily uh, customizable. We think that we could create uh, platforms for specific business models, like we want to create a 
platform for building uh, solutions to the manufacturing industry. And we can specialize, of course, marketplaces. Uh, like for specific uh, businesses or specific uh, clients. Not just for devices or for browsers, but to a specific domain of usage. And how we want to uh, uh, accomplish this by building our cloud application, well, we see our stack in this way. We want to create firstly and create the Kaduk framework, which we uh, can give you as a platform as a service. You can host your models on our servers and integrate with uh, features of our software. We created uh, Kukadumes, the manufacturing management system which you can run as, a, run as a service. You just have two clicks to buy it, select the models you really want, and you can pay only for those models you want and only for the amount you, the, of the users you need. We don't have packages that have many models where you won't use half of them, you just select things you want and because those models are quite small you can customize the system like building from Lego blocks exactly what you need and on top of that we <coughs> are creating now the Q store and this is application marketplace when you can just buy models for our system you can for example buy, start by buying one, one, one model let's say you want to register uh, transfers between workstations there's a material for model for that and let's say in a year's time you said, okay, this functionality was nice, now we want work plans, material requirements, production orders and everything. Then you just select more models you need, you click install and we automatically give them to your system. So this is quite actually nice. You don't have to run custom deployments, uh, hire consultants, you just select the models you need in the App Store and the application is ready in a few minutes. Uh, the App Store is really becoming and will be a quite huge project. We hope to uh, build a large network of independent developers and companies that will help us produce the ultimate solution for the manufacturing industry. Uh, if you would like to produce a model, uh, it would appear in something like this. The user can select uh, the top models or a specific problem he wants to solve and we've shown our models and models of our partners that can solve this problem. So can choose the best solution. Uh, you have detailed information about uh, every type of model, you have uh, its pricing, the cost, uh, mm -hmm. what functionality it does, and so on. Uh, as for the things you will be able to find there, you have techni technical extensions, uh, you have new functionality, like quality control, uh, genealogy management, and so on. You have connectors to other systems. We are currently uh, integrating our software with Subject GT and Enova, which are the, the two Polish most prominent systems in this area. And we also have further plans for Open Bravo and other open source API systems. Uh, we also want to create specific uh, business solutions for uh, not just the whole manufacturing industry, but let's say for the lumber industry or the metallurgy industry or the medical uh, equipment industry. We want to create uh, predefined sets that you, we can uh, say that we recommend this set of models for your business so we can with one click of the predefined set and customize it from that point. Uh, so how will the Kustor uh, look for partners? Well, we don't want to build everything by ourselves. We we're counting that people join and create custom models. We already have ne advanced negotiations with three, four, I think about now, companies that want to create specific solutions for our systems. And if you create a model, uh, be it open source or closed source for our system, you get to choose the price tag for how much you want to sell it. And 70% of the income from that model is yours. You just take 40% for managing the system uh, and uh, acquiring clients for your models. Uh, we also provide model certification. So we'll help you uh, to test the model, to meet our coding standards and so on. And we apply ease of distribution. You won't have to uh, do all the marketing by yourself. You uh, will not have to send licenses and CDs or give any type of download pages, you will just have to upload it to our App Store and it will be automatically available and uh, integratable to the already uh, the installed customer base. Uh, so, as for another aspect that makes us different, uh, we're open, 
this is not a closed source project uh, in which we hold all the property rights. The project is open source and you can uh, use uh, the Cloudomain system by yourself without charging us any subscription if you want. But we advise to use the SaaS version as it is uh, less complicated. Uh, and wh why did we do this? Uh, as you know, opening uh, the source code of a system will limit your profits because we won't be the only ones that can install it and develop it. But by giving away some of the profits, we want to uh, achieve unlimited innovation. So we want people to tamper with the system, hack modules, and try to create some innovative solutions that would be, uh, would be impossible to create in a strict corporate environment. Uh, the second thing we want to achieve uh, critical mass soon, so we just want to make the app store full of models in about a year or so. We don't want to build the system in decades like most of business software is done. And we believe in tra transparency, mass collaboration and uh, making decisions in a meritocratic way. We are not tyrants in this project. We're, if you have an idea, we will uh, be glad to help you with it, uh, consult some maybe adjustments. And we also don't uh, we don't run a policy on our app store that we reject models or not. If the coding standards are okay, we don't limit any functionality to the app store. You can insert any model you want, even not for the manufacturing industry, if you think that's okay. So how does our ecosystem look if we want to achieve all this? Well, first of all, we have the company Kukado Limited. This is where I work and uh, where we create most of the software. Uh, we give free support to open source users just on our forums on issue tracker uh, or on Skype. If you contact us, we'll be happy to help you with some, some problems. Uh, and we create most of the modules of uh, open source modules of Kukadu Maps and the whole Kukadu framework. Uh, the other part of our ecosystem is the open source community, uh, which uh, helps us in doing free support. Uh, we also have some help in building open source models and adjusting the framework. Uh, but besides uh, being open source, we also uh, give uh, paid commercial services. So if you just want to use the software and uh, now to give us detailed bike reports and collaborate, we can give you a service that we will guarantee that the system will run all the day and uh, if anything goes wrong, we just uh, we just fix it in a couple of hours or even minutes if you need that time of response. Uh, and we also build some closed models. Uh, we don't do much of them. Uh, about 19% of the code base is open source. As for now, we only do closed source models for uh, integration with closed source systems. This is our rule so far as it goes for closed source models. And beside this, we also have our partner network which we are uh, <coughs> negotiating with companies uh, to help us sell uh, and uh, support uh, Kukadu mess installations. We actually want to enhance this part so that we don't have to uh, be in the front line and the production line. We want to mostly develop the software and uh, solve the business solutions. And we would be happy to uh, give many profits to companies that would like to promote our software, uh, give training, uh, do some more complex deployments, uh, or just uh, advise the clients to buy it. If some, someone lures a client to our project, we will give him a lifetime uh, uh, amount of income that we receive from that client. And how does it uh, uh, separate into our stack of products uh, and users? Well, on top of every, uh, on the bottom we have the Kukadu framework. This is the uh, tool we use to create our software, and this is also used in a couple of other projects, uh, in a large company called Quantum, and also in an initiative uh, on the north of Poland. Uh, on Kukadu framework, we built uh, Kukadu Mess Community Edition. This is the open source uh, version of the system, uh, which is uh, indent for non mission critical deployments. Uh, this mainly, this is a large number of deployments that don't need to run all the time. Uh, if you want to install the open version in a critical deployment, it's okay, but you have to support it and make sure that it uh, runs all the day and never stops. And it's also meant for developers to create new modules, to hack the system and develop them by themselves. 
Uh, and on top of that all, we create the Kokadu uh, Mass uh, Enterprise Edition. Uh, this is actually the version which we offer to our clients uh, and partners. Uh, it's mostly based on the open source edition. It has uh, some additional cross source models to integrate it with our systems. And it is meant for uh, local mission critical deployments. If some client wants a big installation in his, in his local area. And we also distribute uh, Kukadu Mess uh, on our app store and as a service to all the rest of the clients. Uh, yeah, thank you for your attention and are there any questions maybe? <laughs>